kind of file system based on GPFS. One, two of them are really small and used only for the user. So not normal bandwidth, always back it up, and small size per user available. And the other two are the, the two that Hussein explained before. One is the project, so used for our uh, uh, project submitted by university and not not really a customer for us, but only the community we su support. And this file system has a high bandwidth and it's always backed up. And the capacity the, for each project depends on the proposal we received. And the other one is store, that is the new file system we introduced during last year that is based on a new kind of hardware and it's really mm, chained to the TSM, HSM part. So it's the real hierarchical file system we have. And obviously uh, it's related and it joined the um, contract that CSS has with the customer. So really a fast overview about the hardware we have on project that already um, that Hussein already explained. In the last, which is the pointer? The, the part we had in the last year was this one, the metadata part that we moved from the fiber channel to the SSD just to have a better uh, delay on the metadata Part. So it's good for GPFS because when you apply policy, you mainly work on the metadata. So if you have an SSD, you have an improvement. It's faster. And the uh, TSM storage agent, that those three machines are directly attached to the tape system. So these make fast the process to save the data directly to the tape without any network delay or just using the fiber channel part. Exactly. The same for the home apps. We have one machine dedicated for the backup that is directly attached to the tape, so you save a lot of time because you have you can skip the cache part of TSM. So you have not to do two steps to save the data, but just one going directly to the tape. And the last file system is store. That is the new one we have that is based on DDN hardware and obviously metadata on SSD. And also here we have two machines that are storage agent that directly save the data on the tape. And in the last year we introduced also the cluster NFS part that is provided by GPFS. That means that you can access GPFS not only using the GPFS layer, but you can access using NFS that it's really common and used really easy to use. And cluster NFS because you point to an alias and then if you switch off one machine, the alias go to another machine and you have no downtown down downtime. And it's really useful for us that we are sysadmin and we have to work on the machine. So the users has no stops and we can work and upgrade the system without any problem. And the really huge operation we have done in the last four months is move from the old HSM file system we had at CSCS, so the QFS, SAMFS, the one provided by Sun Solaris before now Oracle. And we moved to GPFS plus TSM. And we did this work using a tool provided by HMK, a German company that helps us doing the migration of a really huge amount of data, like 650 terabytes of data, 6 million of files. So mainly we did like a snapshot as a first step, freezing the metadata at that date, moving only the metadata to the GPFS part using the HMK tool. So. After this, we start to move as a bulk migration all the data from one system to the other one, leaving the production on the old system, so on, on some FS. At a certain point, when we finish the transfer of the huge amount of data, after three months mainly, we did the last synchronization, so 
doing another snapshot, stopping the production on some FS and moving all the files to GPFS, taking alpha day more or less. After alpha days, we move the production to the new system, GPFS and TSM. Obviously, after the migration, all the data were on disk. And so we moved from September to December, as I told before, 26 million of files and 600 terabytes with an average speed of seven terabytes per day. This speed depends on, obviously, on tape drive speed, on network speed, and GPFS performances. The tape drive speed was the more or less 100 megabyte, but the bottleneck was the network speed, because the server we had before GPFS was a Sun Solaris uh, with a PCI-X, so only three gigabytes second. And this was the bottleneck. So we moved a file system with this kind of topology of data. As you can see, the biggest part of data were between, oh, wait, between 100 megabyte and one gigabyte. So not really a small file size, not really a huge file size. That means it's a disaster for the tape because when you read this kind of file, you have a shoe shine effect on the tape, so you lose time. This was because we take we took three months to move the data. On, after the migration, we jump on this new infrastructure that is based on TSM, HSM, and we have mainly one TSM server for each file system that uh, is connected to one other TSM server that is able to manage the library. Why we choose to have another TSM server to connect to the library? Because we want to share all the 24 deep drive. In this case, you can use 24 drive on, on one single file system if you need, because otherwise you have to buy 48 deep drive. So you save money, you save time, and you can use all of them. Is what Hussein told before. So now we are doing the first, we have done the first copy of project. We are finishing the first copy of Slash Store. And obviously, the, the, the data topology is like I showed before. So it's a long procedure to save on tape. But after the first run, it's really fast. And we are doing this operation using uh, the MM backup, that is a utility provided by GPFS that use and the GPFS policy to uh, analyze all the metadata and produce a list to, of files that uh, has changed during the time we, between one backup and the other, doing the list and using the TSM tool to save on tape. So, uh, this is not really a paradise for the moment because it's under construction more or less by IBM. We have a, a, a problem on uh, uh, the catalog catalog of errors between TSM and GPFS because they are both IBM soft, um, software, but they are working together since a few years now, and they are building a really helpful helpful of utility, but now what we have more or less every, every time, we have an error where GPFS is not able to uh, build a shadow database that saves a lot of time. It's not a blocking error, but every time you have to do a backup using GPFS and TSM together, you, have, you need 10 hours for our file system, our sites, to rebuild the shadow database and start the real backup. So, Really, it's not a problem, but it's something that we are going to solve with IBM. We are working very hard to solve, and we are in touch with the lab, and we have an advocate in mind with the HSM team of IBM, and they are working, they are producing fix really often, but we are not reaching the last fix now. So, after that, I can show you two beautiful plans about GPFS at CSES. 
we want to introduce a new GPFS file system, a small file system, but with a nice feature. So a tiered GPFS built on SSD and fiber channel disk just to move data across the two kind of disk depends on access time and the project we need to process with a nice speed or not. Obviously, to finalize the project of disaster recovery we started last year, we want to use the feature provided by TSM 6.3 that uh, is the TSM replica. So build a new TSM infrastructure in a Another site, not in, um, uh, in Lugano, but doing a real-time copy of TSM. So in case of disaster, we just point to the new TSM and we are safe. 